Hello everyone, welcome back to One Touch BI. My name is Sarvanan Vajravel, and today I am going to show you in detail how do we process the image using Python programming language. And let's take a specific example today to tackle or diagnose it. The exercise what I'm picking up today is count of dots or stars in the night time. I'm going to completely depend on the scikit image package from the Python library. And that is the image processing package will be used extensively in this today's exercise. Okay, let's challenge a person. You ask a person to count the number of stars in the night time. Is it going to be easy to count it? No, because the stars are so congested in the sky and it's quite tough to count it because when you start counting, you will miss the sequence and the location of the star because the stars are so closely located in the sky. And that's where the machine learning comes into the picture and that's going to be a very efficient way of counting the stars in the sky. For that, what we need, the very first is, we need to have the image. So, you go and capture the image of your night star and then you process that image. To process that image, we need to follow the following steps. The very first, we need to do the image segmentation. That is nothing but identifying the image and identifying the dots in the image. In general, the image will be red in either black and white. Any color image you have that you convert to the grayscale, it will be red always in a binary coded ones or zero. So that's exactly what we are going to do in this process. The image segmentation will separate the image with the black and white parts and then it's going to identify the location coordinates of each dot. That exercise is called image segmentation. And the second what we can do with the images is image cropping. If you want to resize the image or you want to save the image in a different format, that you can do. And third, you can detect the image. Let's say you have an image with banana, apple or any other fruit. And all you need to do is you have to identify what is that image containing. And that you can achieve using the pre-trained model or you can train the model on your own. And the fourth one is you can enhance the pre-trained model if at all you are not happy on the way the image has been supervised. In that case, you can apply the transfer learning algorithm and then fine tune it. And the last one is fine tuning. Over and above the transfer learning on the supervised learning, you can go and fine tune the information using a conventional neural network algorithm. And that's going to be a tedious and complex exercise. Those are the areas we are not going to touch in today's demo. In today's session, we are going to look only the image segmentation and by learning the image segmentation, we are going to answer our very first exercise, count the number of dots. Are we good? Let's quickly jump into my system to start looking at the code. Okay. Before I move on Python, I would like to say Python is a very simple programming language. By looking at the language itself, you can easily understand how this program is written. It is a layman level English language, which you can easily interpret by seeing the code from math import SQRT. Math is the module where I'm going to take a function or reading from that module called SQRT. Or you can call math is a package and SQRT is a module inside the math module. I would say that it's very easy to interpret the language. Okay. So I'm not moving in detail on the Python tutorial. Assume that everyone has the basic programming knowledge. One follows my 
today's tutorial you can simply go and simulate this code and achieve the output what he wants to do with this exercise that is count of dots or stars in the night time the prerequisite for this exercise is we need to have the following four packages sk image is a very fast and required for the image processing and with that we are going to identify the number of dots in this example and second is the math package and using the math package i'm going to perform certain arithmetic operations square root all that and third is matplot library which is used primarily for the visualization enhancement and displaying the images and doing a circle on top of the image all that you can do using the matplot library as you see the second line from skimage.io import im read im read is the module i'm going to use for reading the image from my local system and then i'm going to count the total number of stars or dots in my image using the image processing library that is sk image or scikit image and the future what i'm going to use blob underscore dog and blob underscore log and blob underscore doh So moving on to the second segment, we are going to read the image. In my example, just to have a complete control on my uh, image, what I did, I created my own image and here I kept the dots. As you can read, I have seven dots in the top and four dots in the bottom. So total this high shaped dots are 11 dots. And I have even lower density with the thickness of very fast. So 11 plus 5, 16 dots are there. That's what you can count with a bar high since you are there right front of the system and it's very easy to count. And this image, I'm going to pass it. I passed it and while pausing, I'm converting into the grayscale so that I can see the image in either black and white okay so it's a very easy to read the image i'm using the im read module and passing the image directory why am i giving dot forward slash dot 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 indicates the current directory from the current directory i'm going one level up and then getting into the images directory why am I doing that? Because my program is getting saved in the path image processing. From the image processing, I'm trying to go one level up that is Python data science. And from there, I'm getting inside the images folder. And then I'm going to read the image nightstars.jpg. So now you got the reason why I went with dot forward slash dot dot and changing the directory one level up and then reading the image and then showing the image using the matplot library with the help of the visualization library plt dot im show and the image what I want to show and what is the gray color you want to substitute in the background that I'm going to make gray and then show the image now we are moving on to the next segment quickly on identifying the number of stars in the image in the number of stars there are three different algorithms we have as i imported in the very first segment blob underscore dog blob underscore log and blob underscore doh the very costliest expression among these three algorithm is blob underscore log. This is going to take more time and the four parameters what we need to pass for this specific function blob underscore log image maximum sigma number of sigma and threshold. The max sigma is going to highlight how much you are going to keep the higher precision point to read the dots and the number of sigma is going to mention 
how much progressive scan you are going to make on reading the dots and the threshold you are going to keep based on the image thickness. If your image is having a bigger dots with visible dots, in that case you can go the higher threshold towards the 1. But if your image is having the lower precision point, as you see over here, this dot is so visible in my high, but the very small dot which has having a very low precision point, this is very tough to read with your human eyes. And this one we need to identify with the threshold point, point 1. I'm going to show in the down by changing this value, how is it going to look different? Okay, now we found the dot and surrounding the dot, I want to highlight this is the dot and surrounded by a circle and that is called the image segment so that i'm going to achieve it by using the radius so what i'm going to do when i run this blob log function this is going to return the values in a matrix array format with three columns let me print the value of blob underscore log that what does it hold as I said, it's going to print in the matrix form with a three columnar data. And it's going to detect all the dots with x, y coordinates along with the radius of the dot. The radius will be identified in the third column. And the first two columns are going to show the result of y and x coordinates. And if you count the number of rows in the matrix column output, you can see that there are 22 entries, which is as same as in the dot image. As I said, the high shaped image is having the 11 dot and the 5 dot on the lighter precision point, And then I have another 6 dots with the stronger precision point, the thicker dots. So total we have 22 entries and the 22 entry you will see in this matrix data. The first two columns are X and Y coordinates and the third column is the radius of the dot. So once I got the dot radius, I'm going to multiply this with a little bigger number so that the circle will be drawn outside the dot. And I just want to give a little space between the dot and the circle. So for that, I'm going to multiply the radius with some bigger number. I can either multiply the radius just 1.4, that is square root of 2, or I can multiply by bigger number. So that's the first approach. And as I said, this is the most expensive one, so more time to process. And the second algorithm, what I have, blob underscore dog. Here we don't need to pass the number of sigma, the parameter. We just have to pass only the two parameters, image and then the maximum sigma. And the threshold we are going to start again starting with dot 1. Again you multiply the radius so that the circle will be visible around the dot. And the third algorithm, blobs underscore doh. And here we are going to pass again the image, max sigma, and the threshold will start from 0 0.01 onwards. And the maximum it can go, the threshold is dot 1. It can't go beyond that. And finally, all these three values, you assign it into the array. And then each result set, that is the DOH, DOG and log, how you are going to differentiate these circles with the three different colors, green, yellow, red and the title you want to make for the three different algorithm, Laplacian of Gaussian, that's called log, difference of Gaussian, that's called DOG, determinant of Asian, that's called DOH. And as you see here, each variable is having an array of value and array of array, how do you assign it to the variable that's using 
zip function. The zip function is going to merge all the array of array values into a single variable. As I highlighted here, this is the one which is going to hold the array of array value into the sequence variable. Now we are going to validate whether we captured all the dots or not and, and then we are going to highlight those dots with the dot circled on top of that with the radius value what we have manipulated in the previous segment. Okay. And using the matplot library, as I said, the matplot library is primarily used for the visualization purpose and the drawing purpose. So using that, I can construct the plot that is one is to three, one row, three columns. And each column will be used for displaying the results of each algorithm that is LOG, DOG and DOH. And then I'm going to call in the loops, the for loop, until I reach all the three algorithm output. The blobs is going to have all three and each blob result, the color will be assigned. That is green, hello, red. And then we have the title for each algorithm results. As I said, the block function is going to return the matrix result set for each dot with three columns x, y and radius. So the moment I take a length function, it is going to tell me exactly how many dots you have in the total image. And that is nothing but my total number of dots that I'm going to suffix with the title. Okay, so I'm going to run this program now. It ran successfully and as you can notice 11 in the left side and 5 in the right side, 16 dots it's bringing up and the second algorithm is not bringing the remaining 5 dots and the third one is bringing all 16. In this case, the first algorithm and the third algorithm that is LOG and DOH is producing the result set very similar and the second one is not accurate. Let me go back to the image. Now I'm going to make the image with little thicker dots. Let's do that. Okay. I'm filling all the dots with the white background so that it shows that it's a thicker dot. Save this image. Let's run this segment to load the image. Yes, the new image has been loaded. Run it, the third segment. That also ran successfully without error. Now let's see. Can you see the problem? The first one is I know it's 11 plus 5, 16 and 16 plus 6. 22 dots is the right answer whereas I'm getting in the first method 64 because it is taking even other small precision points and that's why can you see the, the green dots over there? So it's giving the wrong one and in the bigger dots you see the lots of green dots are sitting. That's why the count was manipulated and showing the wrong and the second method is 17 which is closer but not accurate and the third one is 26. 22 is the right answer, 26 is not again correct. So what we need to do, we have to go and correct the precision points. Let me increase the precision point from dot 1 to dot 4 okay here you see now i have 11 in the top 6 in the bottom 17 but 5 dots what we have this 5 dots are completely excluded because of the precision point got increased 
from 0.1 to 0.4. So this is excluding. So what I do, I'll in reduce it down. And one point I reduced, let's see. Yes, now that dots are considered, but because of the lower precision point I kept, wherever the image distortion is there, that also adding additional dots. That's again wrong. The num sigma, let me change the value. Look at this output. By changing the num sigma, that is a progressive scan. How many times the progressive scan you want to apply? That changes the output drastically. If you want to know how many parameters to be passed for the blob underscore log, all you need to do is in the Jupyter, go to the last line, put the function and press shift plus enter. You will come to know how many parameters to be passed for this function. And similarly, you can apply the remaining functions to aware what are the parameters to be passed. I hope this tutorial seems to be simple and i hope you like the video with this i'm going to end my recording if anyone is not subscribed my channel i request to subscribe the channel right at the bottom click on subscribe if already subscribed you keep watching we will come with updated videos very shortly until then it is sarunan vajravel signing off from one touch bi have a good day